These are my favorite flower. These are Lysianthus. All right, so let's go because I have to put these down. They're so heavy. <laughs> Hello from the farm. Today we are talking about starting Lysianthus from seed uh, and how to do that. Starting Lysianthus from seed has a really um, strong reputation of being a very difficult thing to do. They are a trickier seed to germinate. So we're going to be talking about our tips and tricks for getting Lysianthus to germinate and then a few other growing tips during the season that will help you get lots of blooms. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, why do you want to start Lysianthus from seed? Well, there's a couple reasons, but number one is that it's really hard to buy them in the nursery as plants. Um, usually flowers that you buy at the nursery are going to be blooming because those are the ones that sell the best. So if it doesn't look very impressive, and Lysianthus seedlings don't look very impressive. Um, when they're small, they just kind of look like almost little succulents and highly unlikely that people would buy them if they're not blooming in the garden center. So they don't usually get sold there. Um, they're also really slow growers, so I think they're a little bit more expensive to grow. So those are a couple reasons why you can't really buy them as a home gardener. Now, if you're a small flower farmer, you can buy them as plugs. You usually have to buy a minimum of 125, 210, sometimes 500 plugs. So if you don't need that many, starting from seed is a really great way to go. The other great thing about starting from seed is that obviously it's a lot more eco-friendly because we're not having to ship plants and it's cheaper. So it's always going to be cheaper to start anything from seed. When you're looking for seeds, please make sure you're buying them from a reputable source. I can't stress this enough. Don't buy your Lysianthus seeds from retailers that you just are not sure about or you don't have experience with because a lot of times we find Lysianthus seeds on Etsy, on Amazon, um, and they just tend to not be Lysianthus seeds. Okay, you're gonna get something else other than what you ordered. Go with a reputable source. We usually use Johnny's seeds. There's lots of different varieties you can get. Uh, usually you will see a number after the name of the type of Lysianthus. So for example, Lysianthus Voyage Crema 1. Okay, so that would tell you that it's group one. Group one is gonna flower the earliest, followed by group two, followed by group three, followed by group four. So when you're looking for seeds or for Lysianthus plants, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're staggering those blooms, that you're getting a one, a two, a three, a four. That way you're not getting all ones and they're all gonna bloom at one time and then you won't have blooms for the rest of the summer. So make sure you get a variety of those one, two, three, and four groups. And if it's your first time starting Lysianthes, I definitely recommend you get a variety of different types. Now you'll see lots of different names for Lysianthes varietals, Corelli, there's Voyage. So try a few different types uh, because you're just not sure what is going to do well for you in your zone. I really like the Voyage variety. I find that they germinate well, they're roughly, so they're extra pretty. Um, so I really like to grow those ones. But again, try a variety so that you can really see what works well for you, especially your first season of growing Lysianthus. All right, let's get into actually seed starting with them. So the number one mistake that people make with Lysianthus is starting them too late and planting them too late. So they really do need a nice long establishment period. Make sure you're starting them early enough. When I'm trying to figure out when to start seeds, I always start with this, a very fancy high-tech calendar. And what I do is I start with my last frost date. So knowing that my last frost date is in mid-May, usually around May 15th, I'm going to count back. So Lysianthus really like a cold period to establish in. They don't like to be establishing, that is putting their roots out into the soil for the first time when it's hot. So. Don't plant them at last frost. It will be too warm for them. We usually plant ours about four to six weeks before last frost. They've been snowed on, they've been frosted, they've been fine. Um, if we're gonna get snow, we will just let that snow insulate them. If we're going to get really cold temperatures, say below 20s, and we're not going to have snow, then we'll cover them with some frost fabric, okay, just to keep them from getting too much damage. But they're very cold hardy. So once we figured out our last frost date is mid-May, we're gonna count back four to six weeks from there. So for us, that would be anywhere from mid-April to the beginning of April. So we know we're gonna be planting out probably end of March or beginning of April. We wanna count back from there about five months. Lysianthus, if you're growing them the way that we're growing them, which is growing them a little bit colder, they're gonna take a little bit longer to plant out. So by that math, if we're gonna be planting out, let's say, first week of April, if we're gonna count back. We tend to give ourselves about four to five months to make sure that they're big enough to plant out when it's time. Now, when you get your Lysianthus seeds, again, we get ours from Johnny's, um, 
they are going to be very small. Now usually when you're buying them from Johnny's or from another reputable source, they're going to be pelleted seeds, which means they have a coating on them that makes them a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to handle. Since we're on the topic, let's talk about how what kind of medium to start these Lysianthus in. Uh, they have a reputation for being tricky to germinate, and that's because they really need to be moist for quite a long time. At the beginning of their life, right before they're germinating, they have to stay very consistently moist. This is why we advocate planting Lysianthus into soil blocks. They really do so much better. They germinate faster in soil blocks because the moisture level is so much more consistent with soil blocks than it is with seed trays. Uh, Lysianthus definitely don't like to be root bound, so the more they're getting root circling within that root system, the harder it's going to be for them to thrive. And we have really seen the difference with Lysianthus in our field. The ones that we've purchased from plugs versus the one that we've grown from blocks, the roots of the block grown Lysianthus are so much stronger. They go out further, they extend more, they're not tangled on themselves. They really are just a healthier plant. So again, if you haven't tried soil blocking, if you're going to try it for any seed, try it for Lysianthus. So we do use a heat mat. We're gonna make sure that we're putting a heat mat underneath our tray until we have almost all of them germinated. I would say at least 75% of your Lysianthus germinated. Make sure you're using a humidity cover, some kind of dome over those soil blocks. We'll often use plastic wrap here. It's not the most eco-friendly thing to use, but we do reuse the same sheet over and over. And that way it's gonna help hold in that moisture. If it's taking your seeds a long time to germinate, there's a chance that you're gonna be getting some maybe white looking fungus growing underneath that cover. Don't stress over it too much. It's really not that big of a deal. But if you wanna avoid it, you can lift up that humidity dome every so often, once a day or so, leave it off for about half an hour, just so that that fungus isn't accumulating underneath the humidity cover. Once most of our Lysianthus have germinated, about 75%, we're gonna get rid of that heat mat and we're gonna get rid of the humidity dome. So we wanna make sure we get rid of that so we don't get fungus and mold growing underneath the dome. And then if we leave the heat mat on, they're gonna to get too leggy. Uh, we don't want the soil to be too warm while they're growing. Again, Lysianthus, they're preferring to establish in cooler temperatures. So if we have a heat mat running under that soil, it's gonna make it too warm for them. They're gonna be unhappy. They are tiny when they start out, okay? They're gonna be barely little tiny green specks. To keep the soil blocks moist until those Lysianthus have established their taproot. Once they've got their taproot in, then we're gonna start letting them dry out a little bit more in between waterings. Once you start seeing that your seedlings have true leaves like you see here, this is when you're gonna start letting your seedlings dry out a little bit in between waterings. So here you see two trays of Lysianthus. This one has just been watered, so you can see the color difference between just watered Lysianthus. The soil is definitely darker and the ones that we let dry out a little bit in between watering. So this is about the point we want to get them to. We don't wanna let them totally dry out, but we do want them to be this light brown. That's gonna help keep your Lysianthus from growing algae. Because these are growing for so long in the blocks and they're so slow to grow, they do tend to be prone to algae. So if we keep them consistently moist like these ones, they're definitely gonna start developing that green algae. We wanna let them dry out a little bit in between. That's also better for them as a plant because they're more of a prairie plant. So they actually do prefer a little bit drier conditions. Now we talked about how long Lysianthus take to grow. They are one of our slowest, they are actually our slowest growers for sure that we start from seed here at the farm. So with slow growers can come a couple issues, things like green algae. If you're seeing green algae happening on your soil blocks, there's a couple things that are going on. One is you're not letting those blocks dry out enough in between waterings. Two is you don't have enough air circulation, so make sure you get a fan going in your seed starting area. And then the other one, if you want to try to uh, troubleshoot and fix that algae issue, if you already have it, is to grab some powdered cinnamon, sprinkle the cinnamon on top. You can also try making a little cinnamon tea, taking cinnamon sticks, boiling water, steeping them overnight, and then using that water to water your soil blocks. Cinnamon is a natural antifungal, which is why we have it in our soil block recipe. It's gonna help keep that green algae from accumulating on your blocks. If you do have a lot of it, don't worry too much. It's not that damaging unless you have a lot of green algae, in which case you can scrape it off with a knife. You can try the cinnamon trick. Either of those are gonna help. If you've seen our video, or if you haven't seen it, go check it out about our stinging nettle fertilizer. This is what we use on our Lysianthus. You can also use fish emulsion. 
one teaspoon per gallon of water. And stinging nettle is great because it's a weed, it grows prolifically, um, we just harvest it here locally, we dry it, and then we use it for this tea. And it's a natural source of nitrogen, iron, trace minerals, and lots of things that plants need to thrive. So you can use this, you can also use fish fertilizer, and dilute this again to one teaspoon per gallon and use it weekly. So because these are really slow growers, like we said, they're going to be in the trays for a long time, and if you're not fertilizing them, they're gonna kind of stall out and they're gonna stop growing. So definitely be sure to fertilize weekly. And we are using our nettle tea, our dried nettle tea with a little bit of chamomile in it, which is going to help also with that algae. So remember when we're watering soil blocks, if you guys haven't watched our soil blocking video, we do talk about this there, but you want to be watering these blocks in the channels in between the blocks, not on top of the blocks themselves so we don't dissolve the blocks. Obviously, whenever we're planting something out and we're planting it before last frost, we're going to want to make sure that we harden them off. So if you are growing these in a warmer environment, say in a heated home or a heated greenhouse, then you're going to want to make sure you thoroughly harden them off so that once you plant them out in the cold before last frost, they don't die. Okay, you can't just shove them out into freezing cold temperatures. Okay, so theoretically, let's say that we've grown our lisianthus. They have our three sets of leaves. They're looking nice and bulky, and it's four to six weeks before last frost, so we're getting ready to plant them out. Months later, it's now April, and uh, these have been growing for about just under four months. So. Um, we have elected to leave them in the mini blocks and the reason that we did that was just because of space. So because we are growing so many, um, upwards of 3,000, we really need the space conservation that the minis allow us to do. So these tiny little soil blocks that are only three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch let us do a lot. So you can see there's the ones that actually germinated. I think this set got a little dry, which is why these ones don't look very good. Um, but of the ones that germinated, we probably have on each tray somewhere around 250. So we can really squeeze in a lot by doing the soil block method. Now if you're at home and you're only growing a few lisianthus, you're not doing 3,000, then you can definitely do um, potting up into these slightly bigger soil blocks. So you can see these are actually uh, the one and a half inch blocks that you see here. And the one and a half inch block is a really nice size. So you could definitely start your lisianthus in this size of a block and never have to pot up at all. Again, for us, because we're starting them on the heat mats, we really like to conserve the space because we just don't have that many heat mats. But if you don't have to worry about the space, then you definitely might want to think about starting them in a slightly bigger soil block. Now, when we come to planting out thyme, the thing that we need to remember when we're thinking about when to plant out, now you can see these lisianthus have some roots coming out of the bottom. That's not always the sign that it's time to plant. Um, really, it's more about size. So this, even though it looks small, is a good size to plant out for lisianthus. In general, we want to plant it right about at fourth leaf stage. So you can see on this lisianthus, we have one, two, three, and there's the fourth leaf just starting there in the center. Here's another example of the tiny leaves on the bottom. One, two, three, four. So this is the proper stage for planting these out. Now, as we've been growing them, we've been needing to be careful and make sure that we're not letting them get too hot because what can happen with lisianthus is they do something called rosetting. So sometime around the second leaf stage, they will, if they are too hot for too many days in a row, they will do something called rosetting. And when they rosette, they basically put out a bunch of growth from the base and they never shoot up a flower. So you'll see just a lot of growth around the bottom. Now these ones that we have in minis, I'm gonna grab one and pull it out just so that you can see. I need two hands. Just so you can kind of see what the root system looks like on these minis because if you, if you plant in the minis, you might be a little bit concerned that there's a lot of roots coming out the bottom of the block. That's totally okay. Root pruning is happening here with these uh, little blocks. So all these roots are shooting straight down. These are ready to hit the ground and go ahead and spread out 
So again, why we like to do this version more than we like to do the trays because the trays, the plugs just get really root bound with these lysianthus. This guy is ready to hit the ground and psh, it's gonna be super healthy. So don't worry that these look a little bit small when we're planting them out, okay? We're gonna make sure we're keeping them well watered. And the other tip I'm gonna give you is to be sure that you are doing your root shield dip. Okay, so we use a product called Root Shield. It is expensive. Keep it in the uh, fridge and that will help prolong the life of the Root Shield so you can use it for two seasons. It's about $200 for a one pound bag. So if it's something that you just can't swing right now, you don't have to, but what Root Shield does is it helps prevent fusarium wilt, which is something that lysianthes are really prone to. So it's just a, uh, it's an organic product. It's basically a biological fungicide, and it's gonna help prevent that lysianthus wilt. What I do is I just mix up a nice big bucket of this Root Shield product. I've got my soil blocked seedling, and before I plant into the ground, I just do a quick little dip right into that Root Shield dunk, and then I plant it right into the ground. Now you can see this bed of lysianthus is looking fairly sparse. So what happened is we actually did not treat this bed of lysianthus with root shield. So signs of fusarium wilt or leaves wilting unexplicably, even though you're watering them, one random plant in the middle will start to wilt, then it'll eventually brown and die. Here's an example. So here's one that browned and died. So this one had fusarium wilt. You'll want to make sure you pull these out of your garden and dispose of them in the garbage. Don't compost them because fusarium wilt can spread. Again, you might find that certain varieties are also prone to diseases more so than others. So just play, try different varieties, see which ones tend to work the best for you. Spacing wise, we do about three to four inches between plants. We plant them pretty close and pretty tight. Don't plant them too far apart. They really don't need that much space. I've seen six inches, I've seen nine inches. To me that's too far. We do three to four inches apart and then you'll want to stake them or net them. So if you're only growing a few lysianthus, you're probably going to be fine with just using stakes. If you're growing a lot of lysianthus, you're going to want to use netting. Once our lysianthus are up and growing, it is important to give them some sort of horizontal support. As you can see, these guys tend to get fairly top heavy because the blooms are so large on top. So some kind of horizontal net, this is called Hortonova, and we just lay it horizontally across the surface, and we actually attach them with zip ties to our pipes. You could also use T-posts, but you do wanna make sure that you have some plan in place for support. You could also do two layers. So actually in this row, you can see we do have some flopping. It actually would have been better had we done two layers of this netting and then the ones that are not within the netting tend to get a little bit crazy and they flop off to the side. So horizontal support for these stems is super important. There are also a couple things that you should know about how these lysianthus bloom. So lysianthus have multiple blooms on one stem and they tend to bloom from the bottom up. So these lower ones will bloom first and then the ones up top will bloom last. So that means that if you wait to cut your lysianthus, and this is the great thing about lysianthus as a cut flower, it's fairly flexible with harvest time. So if you want to cut them when those first blooms are starting to open, you can. If you want to wait until some of the ones higher up are open, you can do that too. Now if you do do that, you should know that this lowest bloom is probably going to start to wilt before the upper ones bloom, so you'll just snip that lowest one off and then use the upper ones. Remember to strip your leaves just like we do with any cut flower so that those aren't sitting in the water and then you have your cut all ready to go. We're also cutting really deeply into the stem. Let's take a look at that. So you want to make sure that you're not cutting too shallow when we're cutting these lysianthus. And what I mean by that is cutting up here and I'm gonna do a close up on this, but someone has cut this lysianthus too high. So then what's gonna happen is we're gonna have two short stems coming up from here instead of a nice long stem. So ideally when we're cutting these, we're gonna cut all the way down and we're gonna snip off and leave just one or two sets of leaves down at the bottom. And then that way our following stems are going to be nice and long. Okay, that was a really quick and dirty tutorial on how to grow lysianthus from seed, how to start them in soil blocks. Again, I do really recommend starting them in the soil blocks. If there's one thing you're going to try in a soil block, 
make a bee lisianthus because I'm telling you they germinate so much easier and that's usually the problem that people have with lisianthus is germination. So give it a shot. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Make sure you subscribe so that you get all the tips and tricks throughout the growing season here from the farm.